Welcome back for today's tip, run task sequence. This is a step that you can now add inside of, of another task sequence. What this allows you to do is to create several task sequences and then you can have one parent that will call each of the individual task sequences. Depending on your environment, this can be uh, a great or this could be also a hindrance. So once again, it just depends on uh, what you're comfortable with. Uh, I find this really helpful for me to uh, basically take a very large task sequence and break it into smaller groups or modules as uh, we like to call it. Back in 1710 this feature was introduced. Um, it was pretty buggy for the first couple iterations but everything is uh, quite stable now so that in the fact in 1910 this feature is now enabled by default. If you're running anything before 1910 you'd actually have to go in and enable this feature. One thing that is interesting then when you are on the client and how the test sequence runs is it takes all of the child task sequences and it compresses them down into one uh, main task sequence. So when it runs it only sees one task sequence running and from there it will look like one policy so you can dig through that policy and each child task sequence actually kind of looks like a group when you're going through the SMSTS log here. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that I definitely go out and take a look at the the doc site to just read up on it. In the console this looks a lot like this. I have one uh, parent task sequence here which looks fairly short in comparison to some uh, but what's happening is I call a lot of different child task sequences. For example I've got a launch splash screen so what I'm doing here is I'm setting a variable for my splash screen to upgrade and then I go ahead and I call this task sequence so what happens is it's calling the splash screen task sequence and I've set that variable so I've got different groups inside of here so depending on what my splash theme is set to it will run different steps here where it will set additional variables and different for a color scheme and then we'll actually go ahead and launch this uh, splash screen so when it gets to the end of the tile child task sequence it will cut back over to the main task sequence so then we'll just cut back over to uh, here and continue on so this task sequence uh, I think I'm calling almost like 20 child task sequences. Uh, they range from doing driver packs, language packs, uh, setting up login screen information, and customizations. It's just been really handy to keep all those separated. Uh, another nice thing that uh, we typically would use child task sequences for or are like uh, different BIOS things. So we can set up uh, BIOS updates and run the same exact uh, module inside of OSD or an in-place upgrade or actually just deploy it itself directly to a machine uh, when it's already deployed. So this gives you the ability to be very modular in, in how you deploy things. If I'm working on creating a BIOS update, I don't want to have to go into three different task sequences and change the steps when um, all I need to do then is go into one place, update the code for the update, and then it will be deployed to all of the three different environments at the same time because it's calling the same child task sequence. Something else that I do quite a bit with child task sequences is uh, troubleshooting. I have a special child task sequence that I've created uh, a couple of years back that I, I use for uh, debugging. So what, it, what this task sequence does is it uh, actually backs up the log. Now a lot of these I've actually talked about in previous tips and this is just kind of how I actually use all those previous tips combined into one. It will take and create additional variables, it will dump them to the log file and then I actually have a section here that will copy logs out to a server and depending on the variables for the debug mode it will uh, run in different ways so in this case I've got it so it will always run this debug mode section and it will copy logs if that uh, debug copy logs is true otherwise it won't bother and same thing where it won't actually pause unless debug mode is set to pause so I can actually have this debug uh, child task sequence in like my upgrade task sequence and have it just create additional logging and dumping that out to a server while I'm troubleshooting and creating my initial task sequence and I might not want it to pause every time I might just want it to go ahead run through and just dump all the files out to a, a server and I can easily do that by just 
in the parent task sequence setting different variables that will interact with this child task sequence. So that way I can use the same child for several different scenarios. Well, I hope that showed you the power of using the run task sequence step and I look forward to seeing you for the next tip. Thanks. Thank you.